Okay, please, please settle down, settle down. Okay, good. So, what story will we have tonight? Who would have guessed? <laughs> and who wants Sergey to do his voice? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do my voice. Yeah, Sergey, and I hope your advoc is better than last time. What was that? Oh, it was Spanish. Sergio, the Ardvarco. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see what we get. Now, are our Jim Jams comfy? Our duvets cozy? Pillows fluffy snuggly? Everybody settle down. Then let us begin. Big beetle bird and the big night sky. Big Beetle Bird liked to go out at night with mom and dad foraging by the moon's light. The savannah transformed from the heat of the day and mysterious creatures all came out to play. Bert wondered aloud, why aren't we in our beds? Because we're nocturnal, Bert's mom and dad said. It's usually night time when we leave the nest, while most things that eat us are having a rest. They scuttled through undergrowth, scurried on sand. The intrepid beetles crisscrossed the grassland. Breathless, Bert panted behind Mum and Dad. How do you know where we're going? Bert said. The trick, Mum replied, when you can't see ahead, is to watch where you step and take care where you tread. When there's somewhere you're going, keep going, I say. That's how you'll discover there's always a way. All of a sudden, Bert's dad glanced back round. Shh! We are near meerkats, asleep underground. Oleg and Diana... <laughs> Might look cute and furry, but unless we keep quiet, they'll eat us, so hurry! In their burrow, the meerkats softly snored in their beds as the three beetles tiptoed right over their heads. Dad said, just tread lightly, don't stop to look back. If we wake them, we'll be a meerkat midnight snack. From the bushes, a snuffling, shuffling came near, and a creature emerged with long nose and big ears. Don't worry, said Mom. It's a friendly aardvark. That nose and those ears help him feed in the dark. I can hear you, he said, and I can smell you too. But beetles like you... Aren't my favorite food? Aardvarks like me go out digging at night to banquet on ants and dine out on termites. How intriguing, said Dad. But we really must run. Aardvark waved a claw and stuck out his long tongue. How uncouth, said Bert's dad. How stupendously rude to stick out your tongue when you're looking for food. Please excuse me, said Advak. I mean no offense. It happens to be my most sensitive sense. The reason I put up my tongue in the air is to taste if a termite is wandering near. Then above them the air filled with squeaking and chatter as hundreds of bats swooped and fluttered and clattered. Bert looked up alarmed at the shrill flapping things with their sharp pointy teeth and their leathery wings. Bert's dad laughed and said, to them, squeaking's a song. That squabbling noise is how bats get along. It helps them at night when they're looking for food 
while they're scary to look at, they mostly eat fruit. Rising up from the grass was a peculiar sight, like tiny green sparks drifting up in the night. Bert looked at his mum and asked, What are those? His mum said, They're fireflies, Bert. Look at them glow. But why do they glow, mum? Bert asked her, impressed. As party tricks go, that's one of the best. I'll tell you the reason they flash and they whirl is to frighten off predators and impress firefly girls. As the fireflies danced, Bert looked higher to see two great big bright eyes shining down from a tree. What's that? wondered Bert, his mum hurrying past. A bush baby, said Dad. They eat beetles. Move fast. Their great big round eyes mean at night they can see. When hunting for insects, they jump tree to tree. Let's look for a hiding place where we can stay. If we all keep quiet, he'll soon go away. They scuttled through long grass, then under a stone, until they were sure the bush baby had gone. As the family crept out from their rock in the sand, there was still something Bert couldn't quite understand. But how do we beetles get by in the dark? We don't sleep like meerkats or have ears like adverks. We don't squeak like bats or light up like fireflies. And we don't have a bush baby's bright, shining eyes. Stop here, said Bert's dad. Take a moment. Look up. We beetles can read the night sky like a map. Bert glanced up and gasped at the shimmering sight. The sky wasn't dark, but a blanket of lights. Look at the moon and the stars softly twinkling, said Bert's mom. They give hungry beetles an inkling where we should forage, where food is the best, and how to get safely back home to our nest. They beetled all night beneath the bright Milky Way, scuttling sleepily home as night turned back to day. Excited, Bert asked, Can we come back tomorrow? Dad yawned, yes, but after a snooze, in our burrow. As the marble-like moon rolled away to the west, the beetles were tucked up in bed in their nest. As he drifted to sleep, Bert thought, what did Mum say? When there's somewhere you're going, there's always a way. Look, Mr. Alexander, I think they're asleep. Hey, what did you think of my artwork? Well, you've certainly got the big ears for it, Sergey. <laughs> oh? Night, night, little Oleg. Sweet dreams, Ayana. For even more adventures, please search Sleepy Oleg Bedtime Stories on the Meerkat YouTubes or compare the market website. Ah, <sighs> right now, I think it might be my bedtime. <laughs> Good night.